So our next lab goes back to some more traditional general chemistry laboratory. We're going to do an experiment. We're going to gather some data. Uh, we're going to do some unit conversion and stoichiometry, and that's going to lead us to determine the identity of an unknown metal that we make into a metal oxide. So here's some background on it. I'm going to run through um, sort of experimentally what you're going to be doing. And then this is one of the first labs we're going to see in general chemistry two, where you are going to be generating your own lab report. So it's less of just sort of filling in blanks on a sheet that we'll provide. Uh, we'll give a little bit of direction with the things that you need to include, but you're going to create your own data table. Uh, you're going to do your own calculations. Uh, you're going to write your own results and discussion section. Um, and then you're going to answer some follow-up questions and importantly, create what's called an abstract. So an abstract is kind of uh, a way to summarize everything that happened in the lab. So we'll talk more about those details as we go through here, and then importantly, when we're in lab together. So here's what's sort of happening here. Now, in this lab, there is going to be a metal that you are going to burn. And remember, burning or combusting something is the combination of that substance with oxygen. Well, we also have to remember that there's nitrogen in the atmosphere as well. And even though nitrogen isn't very reactive, there is the possibility of making metal nitrides as well as metal oxides. So we're going to do a few things in lab here to make sure that we generate only metal oxide. So we'll talk about those details as we get to those experimental steps. But at the end of the day, we're going to generate a metal oxide. And based on some data that we are going to obtain from the experiment, we'll ultimately be able to determine the atomic mass of the metal that we used. And from that, try to infer or um, you know, uh, it's almost like a little mystery here, determine what you think the unknown metal is. Okay, so a little bit more detail about how uh, we're working on things here. We couldn't just give you a completely unknown metal. That would be really hard. We are going to tell you that we do um, react this metal in a one-to-one -one stoichiometric ratio with oxygen. Knowing that should tell us that we form a metal oxide that has the empirical formula metal with one oxygen. And so that is a clue that this is a divalent metal. That's going to become an important thing when you do your um, results in discussion and maybe eliminate some metals or um, include some metals based on this piece of information. So here's the chemical reaction then that we know is happening. We have some metal. Okay, that is going to be a uh, divalent metal here. It's going to react with oxygen here and it's going to generate um, a metal oxide. Okay, so we're going to have uh, sort of this sort of chemical equation. Now, you might note here that if we know that this is a divalent metal and we know that oxygen comes as a diatomic molecule, then we know that the metal is going to react in a uh, two to one ratio to generate that. Um, uh, metal oxide. That's going to become an important piece that we'll get to later. So here's some additional information, and this might be a little bit crazy to think about first. I'm going to go over it a little bit more in detail when we talk about our calculations, but here are some of the important data points that we are going to be acquiring. Okay, We need to know the mass of the metal that we are combusting beforehand. Okay. If we know the mass of the metal oxide that we obtain afterwards, okay, if we have a certain amount of metal that we can bust with oxygen and then we get a metal oxide, that metal oxide is going to be heavier because we've combined oxygen with that, right? We know from sort of some of the laws of chemistry that matter can't be created or destroyed. We're just converting it into different forms. So the oxygen that comes out of the atmosphere is now contained in this metal oxide. So if we know the mass of the metal oxide and we know the mass that we started with of just that metal, the difference between those is going to tell us the mass of oxygen that we added. Stick with me here for a second. We can use the molecular weight here to determine the moles of oxygen that are added. And again, we can use our balanced chemical equation to tell us then the moles of metal that were used. Okay, stick with me here. If we want to figure out the atomic weight of something, atomic weight is mass per moles, grams per mole, right? If we know the mole of metal that are used and we know the mass of metal that we used, we can take the ratio of the two of those to give the molecular weight or the atomic mass of that metal. And once we know that, we can use that to infer the identity of our unknown metal. So that's what this lab is all about. 
So let's start walking through some of the experimental details in terms of what you're going to do. You're going to see some metal strips that are up at the front of the lab. You're going to use our top loading balance, not the very accurate one, but you want to know that you have about 0.1 grams of metal. It's not important that you even write down this number, but you just want to make sure you have enough metal to do this experiment. And then we're going to talk about in a second what you do with that next. So just obtain about 0.1 grams of this metal. We're going to uh, get an exact mass later, but I want you to have just that little bit to start with. You're going to be using a crucible. Okay, so we need to first sort of prepare our crucible for you. So a crucible has two parts. Okay, it's a little ceramic cup with the lid. Okay, so you need to prepare this and how we're going to prepare it, make sure that it's super clean, doesn't have any other residue in it, is you want to heat this. Now when we heat this crucible, we're going to use a Bunsen burner. We're going to use what's called a clay triangle to sort of hold that crucible in there. And you're going to notice when you heat it, you're going to see the crucible, that ceramic little dish, is going to glow uh, red hot. And that's what we want to see. We want to heat it until we see that it's glowing red hot. And we always want to be making sure that we're using our crucible tongs with this. You're going to use those tongs to take off that crucible with the lid that's on there. You're going to set it on a wire gauze that's on your bench top and allow it to cool. This is the first piece of data that you're going to acquire that's important. You need to know it to a high degree of accuracy. So we're going to be using our analytical balances. So you want to measure this empty crucible plus the lid. First piece of data that we want to know. Okay. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take that unknown metal that you massed about 0.1 grams. You're going to take that and you're going to put it inside your prepared crucible. You're going to then go back to that analytical balance and you're going to get the exact mass of this. All of these exact masses should be to the 0.0001 grams. So you should have four significant figures after the decimal point there when you, met, when you weigh that. This now is going to be the mass of the metal and the crucible and the lid. Maybe you're already thinking about this. You can take the difference of those two values and that'll tell you the exact mass of the metal. Okay, now we're ready to do this experiment. So here's what we need to do. Okay, now we are going to be heating this crucible with its contents. We have to be very careful to do this according to the directions here to make sure that we don't... Um, I think even the words in your lab manual are ruin your experiment. So we want to make sure we follow these directions carefully, okay? You want to, with the lid, you'll notice here, the lid is um, the lid is pretty securely on here. So that you want the lid on here while you're heating this. You're going to heat this for about three minutes. You're going to be lifting the lid with your crucible tongs just slightly, about one time every minute to allow additional oxygen to sort of go in there. And during this initial combustion period, we don't want to be having the lid off because we don't want to lose any of our contents, okay? But after about three minutes, what you're going to do is you're going to remove the lid, make sure to go and set it back on that wire gauze on your bench top so it's in a safe space because that's going to be very hot. And you're going to heat this crucible with the rest of your metal contents in there for about seven minutes, again, without the lid. So a total of about a 10 minute heating period, and then you're gonna set now this crucible with its combusted contents back onto your wire gauze and let that cool, okay? Shouldn't take more than a few minutes, but we wanna make sure that it's pretty cool before we move on to our next step. Okay, so highlighting here, this is what we sort of did in our last step, about 10 minutes of a heating. We did the first heating sort of with our lid pretty tightly on, lifting it up just slightly, then seven minutes with no lid, and then we're letting the whole assembly cool. We want to make sure that that assembly is fully cooled because then the next step is we're going to be adding 10 to 15 drops of water. So we want to make sure that this is not so hot that when we put that water in there, it's sizzling. Okay, now what's going to happen here, and I don't think I highlighted this clearly on that first slide, what's going to happen is we are going to add water. It's going to react with any metal nitride that may have been produced by the metal reacting with nitrogen in the air, and it's going to eliminate ammonia. Okay, so again, that's going to convert that metal nitride. If there's any of it there, there shouldn't be a lot. Nitrogen's again not very reactive like oxygen, and it's going to convert it into a metal hydroxide. Okay, then what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to convert that metal hydroxide into the metal oxide. And we do that by heating it to drive off the water. 
So we have to, again, be careful and follow directions here with this heating step. In this case, we really just want to warm our crucible that's just slightly with the lid ajar. We do this for about one minute, and you're going to do this by sort of moving your Bunsen burner around. We don't want to get that red hot crucible here. We just want to be warming this for a little bit. Again, we don't want to have sputtering water and things like that coming off. That can lose, cause a loss of product. And then after that warming for about one minute, then we're ready to heat with no lid. And again, this is going to be another 10 minute heat. Okay. After that 10 minute heat, we're going to again, allow this to cool. We're going to do that on our wire gauze and we're going to get our last measurement here. This is going to be the mass of the metal oxide that's now in our crucible. And we want to make sure to mass the lid too, because that's what we masked when it was empty. Okay, so that's the whole experiment. Truthfully, it shouldn't probably take more than about 40 minutes total to do the entirety of the experiment, but we wanna make sure that we're following directions carefully, not only so that we're safe, but so that we can obtain good data. Okay, so what is your lab report going to entail? You're gonna have a handout that you'll get in lab that sort of has spaces for you to fill in these parts. There's a space where you can create your own data table. I just give you a qualitative list of things that you need to put in there. You're gonna uh, construct your data table um, in a way that makes sense to you. There's a spot for you to do calculations. Again, I'll make sure you know these are the things that you need to calculate. But again, little less walking through doing these types of things in this lab report. Okay, these spots are fine to be sort of handwritten. And again, this is gonna be what you submit sort of um, in, uh, on paper to me uh, before you leave lab. Okay, your results and conclusions, uh, I'm going to ask that these be typewritten. I'm going to strongly encourage you to finish those before you leave lab. Okay, I'm there to help you with them, but these are going to be submitted as a digital file on Blackboard. And then there's some additional questions that you'll have to answer. Um, again, those can be done either handwritten and turned in at the end of lab, or again, you can find a way to turn them in digitally on Blackboard with your results and conclusions. So let's walk through each of these sections in a little bit more detail and talk about what you need to have. So again, three things you're gonna to have to have in your data table, the mass of the empty crucible, the mass of the crucible with its contents before you do your reaction, and then the mass of your crucible with your contents after the reaction is completed. So really only three things that need to be in your data table. You're gonna construct, uh, construct your own data table, making sure that things are properly labeled, have the correct units, and importantly, have the correct number of significant figures. So again, a little bit more work on you to construct that data table in a way to organize your experimental work. All right, calculations. Running through this uh, a little bit more slowly now, but highlighting where you're gonna get all these pieces of information. You'll notice I'm not telling you how to do the calculations here. I'm telling you the things that you have to determine for your calculations. Okay, the first thing that you have to determine is the mass of metal that was used. Well, hopefully that's obvious from up here where you would get that, right? If you know the mass of the crucible and its lid when it was empty, and then you know the crucible with the contents before you did your reaction, the contents were again that unreacted metal, then the difference of those will tell you the mass of the metal that we used. So that's an important calculation that you're gonna to need to do and a piece of information that you're going to need. The second piece is you're going to need to determine the mass of oxygen that's added. Okay, You'll notice that that's not something specifically that I have listed here in calculations, but again, that's another difference that we're going to need here. If we take the crucible contents before we reacted, when all that's in there is a metal, and the crucible with its contents after the reaction when it's the metal oxide, the difference between those two, the only difference between those is oxygen that was added to make our metal oxide. So the difference between those will give us our mass of oxygen that was added. That's going to be part of what you need to use to determine the moles of oxygen used. If you know the moles of oxygen that were added, I'm sorry, the mass of oxygen that were added, Molecular weight can get you to moles of oxygen. And then once we have moles of oxygen, a balanced chemical equation, which we know is this, is going to get us to the moles of metal used. So again, mass of metal used, moles of oxygen used, moles of metal used are important calculations. So again, moles of oxygen is gonna require us to think about the mass of oxygen added Molecular weight converts to moles, and then our balanced chemical equation allows us to change who we're talking about and relate 
the moles of oxygen that were used to the moles of metal that must have been there. Okay, last piece, calculation to determine the atomic mass of that unknown metal. Remember, atomic mass is grams per mole. So if we know the mass of the metal that was used and the corresponding number of moles of that metal that were used, the ratio of those will give us our atomic mass. And based on looking up atomic masses of metals on the periodic table, we should be able to identify some candidates that that unknown metal could be. Now, part of your results and discussion section is to identify what you think that unknown metal is. But importantly, you have to provide some reasoning for that identification. How did you rule in or out things that maybe had similar molecular weights? Okay. So some thinking that you'll have to do to uh, land on what you think that unknown metal is. And an important part of this lab is an error analysis. So here's what you need to have for your error analysis. Again, all of this is gonna be listed on your handout. You're going to need to identify sources of error, okay? This is not calculations, right? Calculations are not a source of error. These are experimental things, right? Did you think you lost some product at some point? Or did something happen in your experiment that might um, cause you know, one of your measured values to be higher or lower than you might expect? So whatever you identify as a potential source of error, you must report how that would affect your calculated value. Would that make your atomic mass too high or too low. So again, you need to discuss if your proposed source of error is going to affect things like the mass of the metal or the moles of the metal, right? Because both of these play into what you think the atomic mass would be. I'm gonna give you a hint here. You're not likely to affect the mass of the metal because that was before your experiment happened. There's really nothing from an error standpoint that was going to happen from the time that you took that metal, put it in your crucible and weighed it. So this is pretty much a fixed value. So as a hint, this is where the error is going to be translated. So you need to think about whatever you're identifying as a source of error, how would, uh, um, how, how would it ultimately affect your calculated moles of your metal, okay? So you wanna think carefully about that, put some, put some thought into it. Um, you know, I'm here to sort of uh, run your ideas by, but you want to think about this error analysis. And then the last piece is you need to answer some additional questions. So there's some additional questions at the end of the lab that you need to uh, answer to complete sort of this post-lab results and discussion section. Again, uh, the uh, additional questions uh, can be handed in um, if you wanted to write those out, uh, but this results in discussion section, um, I do want that to be typed. One other section that needs uh, to be typed is going to be writing an abstract. We'll talk a little bit more of this in, in, in lab, but all of these sections here in terms of um, what the experiment was about, uh, what you actually did, the data that you obtained, what that data told you and conclusions. If you wanna think about it in terms of those sort of five pieces, um, you need to write me a one to two sentence summary of both of those five pieces. We'll talk a little bit more in lab about what that should look like, but this is really a paragraph. So a paragraph somewhere between five and 10 sentences that gives me an overview of everything that happened in the lab. And I'll provide you sort of a sample of um, an abstract from a different kind of lab, but so you can sort of see the different pieces that are involved. So that's it with our unknown uh, metal oxide.